Welcome back to the CBS channel. Uh, you know the face, it's right again. Today, uh, or now, <coughs> with his uh, talk about AVIO, AVIO, audio, video, input, output. Sounds stupid, but it's great. The stage is yours. Hello, welcome back, or welcome to this lecture. Uh, this lecture is about a little bit of an artsy thing, but it's also a technology demonstrator. Because um, maybe you followed my earlier talk from an hour ago, I already mentioned that this project was built with the Isomer framework, which was developed for the Hackerfleet operating system initially. And I wanted to showcase um, one, one thing is that Python developers always get uh, stupid comments like Python is slow. And I, I was kind of set out to demonstrate that that is just untrue. It just depends on how you use it. So I started building a multimedia system or solution that is... Yeah, well, let's see what it is. Um, I hope you like arts because um, this talk introduces you to Avio and Avio is, was made for arts. Um, arts in, in the context of many things. Um, what does AVIO stand for? It's uh, a short acronym, and I know it's a little bit stupid, but it stands for Audio, Video, Input, Output. And actually, it doesn't stop there. We are taking much more than just audio and video data and mangling it. We are also taking lots of weird inputs and outputs, like you can control uh, stuff with your joystick, and we'll see later. Um, it came up because I had all these formats, and I wanted to mix and mingle them, and be creative with them. So um, if you look at uh, what the cool kids are doing in the industry, in the music industry or VJ industry, whatever, they all have cool tools. They have tools like VVVV or Blender or something. You know, everybody has to have some tool in use to make their performance greater. And Avio aims to be the Swiss army knife of these tools, um, but it's got some Focus again, but again not. It's complicated. Um, but you can combine it with any other tool because of the, the multitudes of inputs and outputs. So let's dive into the technical aspect of the software suite. Um, it's uh, actually just a bunch of lots of imports and uh, some very interesting glue to get everything together. Um, I'm, I'm standing on, on the shoulders of giants here because Python learned so many tricks regarding multimedia and uh, various input and output formats. Um, for some things you just have to import this and then use it and you're happy. Um, yeah, please clap now. It's, it's not really that much effort, but I think uh, the, the collection or, or how to, to glue it together, that, that is what makes Avio special pro probably. Um, behind the scenes, uh, as I already mentioned, it uses the Isomer as core framework because uh, it, it brings some facilities that are really useful in, in building such a tool. There's a web front end which you can use to configure various parameters of your operation and it's got uh, live previews and you can use it as renderer. Um, but it's also got the full power of the Isomer backend as in modularity and components. Um, let's see, I think I have a, f a slide about that. Yeah, we're getting into the gritty details now. Um, so um, the general idea of Avio is that everything is kind of like a first-class citizen. I'm not really focusing on any aspect specifically. But every idea, every part of it should get the same attention and be intermixable in any imaginable way. Some of these ma ways may don't make sense, others make a lot of sense. And the, the kind of like drive that you should have when working with a suit is to try out things. It's, it's very experimental and sometimes you, you delve up on very interesting things to do. Um, the, the overall system component architecture allows to uh, combine various aspects of technology together in, in new and uh, sometimes meaningful ways. It's much like pure data where you can build graphs of components that com co communicate with each other to achieve certain specific goals. 
Um, plugins can be developed and built with the Isomere infrastructure in mind, so you have ge some, some general purpose tools for communication or network operations, uh, but also some, some simple components like a Pygame input component where you can use SDL input devices. Um, uh, the, the components are communicating by event-based messaging, so you just emit your data and somebody else might pick it up or might not. Depends on what components you're running, but you can design concise graphs. And this allows asynchronous handling, which is very important because I don't know when there's some MIDI input coming or some joystick input. Everything happens on the fly, so everything needs to be processed as such. Uh, this also allows for very efficient computation. If you do it the right way, uh, think of streams, and then you're pretty much set. Um, the, the, the detailed user interface, which is not really performance-oriented, uh, runs in a web browser by a web server, so you can fine-tune things or load configuration data or whatever. Uh, but, but this is not meant immediately as performance interface. I'd like to, to get... Um, the computer out of the way when I'm I'm performing as as musician, so um, this this is just for setting up kind of like um, to actually be able to do something with our view. You need needs a need a little bit more than just uh, maybe input and output components. Um, there's uh, a multitude, of, a really a real bunch of components for different kinds of things to do. And uh, I come up with some ideas every few months. Just recently, I built a beat counter, which can allow you to synchronize better to music, or a uh, joystick interface for switching presets, for example. Um, so there's lots of batteries already included. We have uh, human interface device support uh, for gamepads, joysticks, analog sensors in them. Like uh, I was, I was very astonished uh, to find out that uh, certain gamepads, uh, as, uh, although they look like they have buttons, those are analog buttons. So you you get 26 analog inputs on on one of these controllers, for example. There's also cameras and other OpenCV-based sensors available, and we have MIDI input and output via via Pygame. Pi but uh, I'm I'm working on other solutions as well, so you can communicate with Jack immediately. Um, there's also an OSC library that are integrated, so you can uh, get data from OSC controls or send them out. Um, you can ob obviously import and export various file formats. Uh, I'm, I'm working a lot uh, with uh, animated image sequences like GIFs, but I also loaded videos already. And there's all sorts of, of weird stuff um, that might come in useful depending on what you're doing, on, on what you already have. And it's easily extendable. Like you can write a protocol adapter in less than 10 minutes and it's good to use. So um, the one interesting part is the output. Like we talked about lots of inputs. How do you output the result? Uh, well, with the data buses, it's pretty easy. You just send out some MIDI clock or data or some, some other control information. But sometimes or very often you want to render video data, for example. Um, this can be done uh, in, in future. This, I'm working on this uh, with the Phaser I.O. library in the JavaScript frontend. So you have some, some rendering head that runs in your browser and can make use of 3D surfaces or 2D arts. And you can play back sounds and music if you want to. Or you, you, you could stream audio from the Avio server itself. Um, Talking about server, is it's uh, obviously very strongly attached to network devices, so you can have multiple machines running on your system and have one dedicated to this task, one dedicated to that task, and they can communicate with each other and exchange meaningful information, like scenery control data or something. Um, but this mostly needs to be built by hand because there's not much infrastructure yet to automate these kind of things. Um, while I was playing around with uh, mixing video sequences for our Mate light, I don't know if we can sweep the camera to that maybe, but uh, you, you uh, yeah, someone can do that quickly. It's a uh, 16 by 40 pixel uh, light. Some people may have known this, may know this for, for some years already. It has been at congresses, and it was one of my prime output examples 
because mixing video information for this tiny display is really... Uh, you can even do that in PHP, or in BASIC, or in Shell Script, and people are doing it, and there's actually really nice applications uh, working with that, and it's, so it's a perfect candidate for AVIO test runs, and I started mixing uh, video information, I think, four or five years ago, and, and this, this was actually the, the ground stone for the AVIO framework, because um, uh, it started that way. Uh, but, but at some time and point, uh, when, when I was really bugged off by the, all those naysayers that Python is too slow, I decided to just increase the frame buffer a little bit and take bigger input imagery and mix that. Uh, so I was mixing six to seven H full HD streams in Python in real time. And I think that's pretty impressive, considering that there was no optimization going on at all. I was just using NumPy to transform these these mat matrices in, into each other, and it worked. Um, since then, I've gotten many pointers and input uh, on how to build a blazingly fast working system. Like, there's approaches on doing this uh, on the graphics card RAM, uh, because with textures you can be so much faster, uh, and you could animate textures by, by just rolling them by, for example, or there's, there's other approaches. Many, many interesting ideas came up from some communities, and I, I hope to be able to add some of those in the next few months, so we get um, yeah I have a fully fledged video mixer for uh, full HD or even more resolution capable. So um, what did I do with that already? Uh, some stuff was just too good to not try out, and um, some stuff stuck. Others, other experiments were not so successful, but let's let's check out some. I already mentioned the Matelite mixer. I'm getting ahead of, got ahead of myself, but th this is really a nice tool, and uh, I hope to to have a nice front end uh, for controlling the the VJing functionality soon. Uh, I've been building something with a web front end where you have uh, it's it's like a mixer deck, and you you can see several slots and add more more of those, and you can also render text inputs, text text labels, which is all preparation work for a larger system that is capable of not running on just 40 by 16. Um, then there was the virtual vibrato um, with a Sony 6-axis controller. Hello Sony, that's uh, really nice that you developed a, a Linux dr driver for your recent gamepads, by the way. Uh, they are not completely evil, I love that. And uh, I was playing around with that unit a lot because it allows you to get a lot of analog input. And it's conveniently already bite-sized, so you can just take it and translate it into MIDI data. That was what I tried, and then I hooked it up with Bitwig Studio and um, added some of those modulators to the pitch frequency of a synthesizer. So I could, with the accelerometer, by, by shaking the gamepad, I could play a perfect vibrato. And I could uh, tune it, uh, like you can shake slowly, you can shake fast, you can shake hef hefty or just small movements. It's very fine tunable, it's like, like playing a real vibrato with a real instrument but you can add it to any aspect of your synthesis process. Uh, you could also convert this into uh, mixing data for, for VJing, for example, or you could just hot glue the controller to your instrument and then do some movement things on your FX chain, for example. It offers lots of op possibilities, and um, sadly, I, I don't have too much time to, to try out new things, otherwise I, I would probably be doing wicked shit with it. Um, so, um, why, why am I uh, focusing on this isomer aspect? Because um, the isomer framework is about to get some upgrades in the next few months that are really beneficial for AVU as well. Like, uh, there will be pipes and buffer tools for more protocols which are not core related to AVU, but um, are, are sharing uh, common functionality with other applications that were built with isomer. For example, we have added MQTT for the sailors to get sensor data across networks. Uh, this may be used as well for performance situations. Um, there's uh, strong support for command line tools, which may sound like it's not so relevant, but uh, I, I catch myself quite often fine-tuning stuff uh, with command line tools I wrote. And uh, the comprehensive configurable web access, uh, it allows to work, col to co collaboratively work on your performance because 
essentially this gives you uh, over the client server infrastructure it gives you multi user access to to what are you, you are doing and uh, people can fine tune their aspects of their show where they can completely control everything if you want to you can also limit that by permissions but no we are artists we are we're not limiting ourselves um then there's this aspect of peer to peer uh, with mesh-based networking, and this this opens whole new areas of performances for large outdoor sceneries, for example. And I'm 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 really wondering what the community may come up with. And I hope you 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 have a look at this and maybe adopt it and try out what you what you can do. Um, so I sure hope you all like uh, Isomer and Avio by now. And that pretty much concludes my talk. Uh, maybe we have some community questions going on now. Perhaps never give up the hope. Otherwise, if not, you can always find me online. I'm riot at cbase.org. I am riot in the at Freenode, and uh, there's several other channels you can contact me over. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this talk as well. And there will be another last talk from me at 8 p.m. this evening. It's a, a German lecture, and it's about the Leerstandsmelder where I will be presenting a social tool to um, get uh, a better stronghold on um, illegal activities around uh, Leerstand, vacancies of shared flats. Thank you and have a good RC3. Bye. <laughs>